Aloha. Welcome to the 41st Annual Hawaii International Film Festival presented by Holly Kalani and our discussion with Ron Chapman, director of From Earth to Sky. We would like to extend our thanks to Honolulu Civil Beat, Han Blue, and Neo Taro for sponsoring this program uh, as part of our documentary panorama and indigenous land sections. My name is Anderson Lay, and I'm the uh, artistic director for the festival. Uh, joining us uh, in the discussion are two subjects from, uh, from the documentary. I'd like to also um, welcome Tammy Eagle Bowl. Uh, Tammy is a Native American architect and president and co-founder of Encompass Architects in Lincoln, Nebraska. She's the first Native American woman in the United States to become a licensed architect. And uh, it's a great honor to also welcome Douglas Cardinal, considered the first indigenous architect in North America. He is an architect, designer, planner, activist, philosopher, and artist. Uh, Mr. Cardinal is that, that and more, as, and one of the most influential thought leaders in the industry. Uh, you know, his work is, uh, especially in museums like the National Museum of the American Indian in DC and Canadian Museum of History. Uh, if you haven't seen, if you haven't visited the, uh, the, the National Museum of the American Indian, uh, I implore you definitely to go, go and visit there. It's absolutely amazing. Um, before we start, I'd like to give a quick land acknowledgement, uh, acknowledging Hawaii as an indigenous space whose original people are identified as the Kanaka Maoli or the Hawaiians. And uh, some quick housekeeping bits, programming updates for up-to-date information on additions to our program and the full schedule of films, events, hip talk story sessions, and Q&As. Visit our website at hif.org. For audience awards, uh, to participate in our Hawaii News Now audience award voting, please cast your vote via ballot in theaters or online at watch.hif.org or on our apps by voting with the five stars on the film's page. Vote for your favorite narrative documentary and short film. Mahalo to Hawaii News Now for their support. Okay, so let's uh, start off the discussion and like to um, actually um, ask Ron. Ron, um, you uh, are a filmmaker of like, you know, you've, you've I've, you know, from your bio, you've, I've seen some of your work as well, uh, especially you wore many hats uh, as a, not only as a creative, but also as an artist um, from like, you know, um, concert promoter to a musician, uh, you've released an albums and albums, uh, you know, and in a lot of your documentaries have been a lot of it and has been in the music industry. Um, so what were what was your interest in um, kind of coming up with this project? Um, if I could just start, I just just for uh, clarity, I just wanted to mention that uh, you had introduced um, Douglas and Tammy as subjects. And and I think in this particular case, they were very much collaborators. Uh, and I think it's an important distinction. Uh, you sure. know, they were not subjects, they were collaborators, as, right. as were the rest of the architects who uh, who worked with me on this film. Absolutely. Um, and, and my interest, though, what brought me in initially is I heard that uh, that Douglas and a group of 18 architects had, uh, had just been chosen by the Canada Council to represent Canada at the uh, Biennale, the architectural Biennale, in Venice, and uh, to me it was it was fascinating, and I was my interest was piqued because there were 18 architects that were involved. The architects were from Canada as well as from the United States, so from across Turtle Island, and and their intention was to go to Venice and show the world what was indigenous architecture, which was something that fascinated me because I also was going, geez, I wonder what indigenous architecture is. Also, I thought it was fascinating that uh, the architects were from what you would call Canada and America, and yet they were representing Canada, and that the, the nations uh, that they, they came from didn't necessarily recognize Canada as a sovereign nation. So there was a, a whole bunch of questions and not a lot of answers, and, and all of that I said, you know, this to, to, to get involved and to get close to this would be a, a fantastic learning experience for me. And, and I think if it's going to be a learning experience for me, it would be a learning experience for an audience and something that would, uh, would really, you know, reach people and, and interest them. I, I got together with Douglas and, and proposed that we, we work together on this and, 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 and come up with a film, which was more about at the time, uh, the Venice and the Biennale. And he, mm. uh, he spoke with, with elders and with the rest of the architects and, and we agreed to work on this project together. And that's that's how it started. So I guess you're saying the original idea was to follow them to the Biennale, the unseated um, exhibit, and what have you. 
Um, and then how did it how did it like expand to include other um, uh, architects uh, and then going to their you know kind of like um, and you know basically mm -hmm. interviewing them and going to their spaces as well. <clears throat> well, it became clear to me um, that uh, as they were putting the exhibit together, that it was going to be very difficult to follow 18 architects who were in different locations and the evolution and, and execution of that particular space. But as, as I said from the beginning, and I, I saw it as being very much a learning experience for me. And as I learned more uh, and, and sort of gathered more knowledge, I realized that each of that, that and, and there were 18 architects, all of them great uh, in, a, you know, in terms of what they had done and, and, and uh, the work that they had uh, accomplished. But I realized that uh, that it would be probably more beneficial to focus on these architects to get an understanding for each of them, what was indigenous architecture and find out what were the similarities, what were the differences um, and and how they, uh, you know, how they saw themselves um, in the in the world today, contributing to their communities and other communities and uh, and so that ended up being much more interesting to me as a story than just following uh, the uh, the evolution of this um, uh, exhibition in Venice, which I did cover, and 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 you do see somewhat in the film, but it's certainly no. I, initially, I, I was calling the film the Road to Venice, and eventually it ended up being, mm -hmm. you know, the road to about you know to about uh, five different states and four different provinces in New Zealand and Italy. So it was a much bigger road by the end of the film. Absolutely. I mean, so for the, because you had the also going to the, the conference in New Zealand, uh, mm -hmm. uh, was that, I mean, proceeding basically through the, in the documentary, um, the Biennale, um, I, you know, like, it's like, because, you know, because of Hawaii and being, being part of the Pacific Rim and maybe uh, and Douglas and Tammy talking about kind of like just this, um, camaraderie just like you know of, of, of like you know just, of, of indigenous people and communities and first peoples uh um and working together regarding that and seeing the similarities between and, and shared experiences i mean douglas you're you know instrumental in especially your front and center especially in the biennale and whatnot but can you just comment on on kind of like seeing sharing these stories and sharing the similarities with other communities around the world Yes, uh, indigenous people around the world have the same problems and the same issues with these nation states that want to colonize us all. It makes them all the same. But we have this tremendous connection with the land and with Mother Earth and, uh, and our architecture and our expressions come from our Mother the Earth. Yeah, absolutely. And like, you know, the fact that I believe being indigenous in a colonized world, that's like, you know, what is, what yeah. a statement. And, you know, like, I mean, and Douglas and also Tammy, you know, this is an old question for you. Like, I mean, you're, you're both first, right? But it's also, it, which is amazing, but at the same time, it's so crazy to be, you know, like, I mean, like, it took this long. I mean, like, it's like, you know, this is just through a couple of generations and whatnot, you know, like that. <clears throat> You know, like I mean, just comment on that. Like, just being—I mean, the fact that being first, um, and just maybe from your kind of careers and your work experience, and also your personal lives. I mean, Tammy, I think you. I mean, there's a great um, kind of soundbite in the film where you said, "Native work is less. Being native work is less than right." Like, can you just comment on being the first uh, of who you are and working in this industry, and then maybe some of the prejudices you faced uh, in your careers? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, definitely. True. I think it's it's. Oh, please, Kevin, Tammy, go ahead. I was going to say, I, th I think de definitely. You know, it, I felt the same way that you did when I found out that I was the first woman. Um, it because I got licensed in '94, and that just seems really late to me. You know, to to be having a a, a first. But um, since then, I think what I've tried to do is 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 be a, a role model and you know it's really amazing right now that there are so many young women and men in architecture schools um, indigenous w women and men and I think the next generation that's coming up and the next generation that's coming up are going to be amazing and they're going to be able to add so much to what we're already doing and they're starting to teach this in schools too and in universities with with my colleagues being um, into universities and and 
influencing the design programs there. Yeah, Douglas, you want to comment on, you know, just basically kind of maybe the prejudices you face as well in your career? Well, uh, uh, what, uh, what I think indigenous people have to offer is this balance and harmony with our planet, the earth. And, and we have been taught how to live in harmony with, with this beautiful planet. And, and because, uh, uh, the colonists really have uh, put the whole planet in jeopardy because they have not had the same teachings of loving and caring for all life. And so as a result, we find ourselves in serious trouble on the planet right now. So unless the overall uh, public start adopting some of our basic principles as indigenous people, we're not going to have a future for our children, all of us, because we're we're really harming the planet with our with this doctrine of um, being dominion over nature. I mean, they just don't get it that we are nature and we have to respond in a natural way to our mother, the earth. And so we have a lot to offer as an indigenous people because we have been trained to understand that we're a part of this earth and whatever we do affects everything around us. And therefore we have to uh, totally change our thinking, uh, you know, universally. And our indigenous people can really help in that. Indeed, this is the time when we start making our, our tremendous contribution to our human family and have people listen to the thousands of years that we have been in harmony with our mother, the earth, and have all these teachings available to everybody. And so it's so important. I know we had missionaries that taught us the other way of being dominion over nature, but perhaps we have to be missionaries in teaching the dominant cultures that they have to live more in harmony with our mother, the earth. And yeah. a powerful expression is architecture and planning. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, maybe just because this is like, you know, this is nothing new, but, uh, you know, just, I'm just bringing up current events, like, you know, like in this past summer in Canada, where they found uh, graves of like, you know, sites of like, you know, of, of um, you know, from basically, you know, just the, the programs of like, you know, uh, uh, indigenous uh, uh, children being, you know, taken to taken to schools to basic to to be, you know, I mean, and the fact that you had that, um, Ron, maybe uh, maybe comment on the uh, the uh, there was one segment where they actually went to um, one of the kind of those old schools, whatnot, and like, you know, and in, and in building a new kind of wing or extension of that and. Uh, uh, I mean, you know, those, those, those that, 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 arc, that, that arcane, like very scary architecture, just right out of a horror movie, you know, like these, these schools, these buildings were very much like, you know, very um, almost like, I mean, you see in the movie, it's kind of like almost like institutions or mental hospitals in a way, you know, can you comment on kind of what, what these, uh, you know, kind of uh, your collaborators that you're working with and what they're coming from in kind of like um, building a new space out of like something that's so, so traumatic. Yeah, well, I mean, I can um, look. First of all, I mean, you 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 mentioned you know what was discovered, what what the what the government of Canada uh, was uh, party to, and what the church was party to in mm -hmm. the residential schools, and it's and it's it's heinous. Uh, I mean, it's 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 uh, it's almost unimaginable that that happened. And I certainly you know I'm not the best one to speak to that. Uh, of course not. Yeah. You know, Douglas is a yep. residential school uh, survivor, and he can speak to that. I, 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 but I do know that, you know, it was very powerful for me uh, to be there um, uh, at the time at, at a residential school and to have it described to me and, and put in context for me as someone who didn't have, doesn't have that history, you know, and, and, and architecture, the architecture that existed before uh, for the uh, Indigenous peoples here, 
you know, was not uh, that European, you know, big, huge and imposing. And, and, and when they when they talked about, you know, being dragged from their villages, uh, separated from their families and brought to these these huge buildings where they were dwarfed and lost inside. I mean, it must have been like a horror, just a horror for them. Uh, I mean, every aspect of it, it's it's it's. Uh, I, you know, I, I don't know what to say. It's, it's unimaginable to me that anyone could perpetrate that on another human being. Uh, uh, and I don't, yeah, I, it's unimaginable, but, but it's the truth. And it's, it yeah, is what it, happened. It is what it happened. Is. I mean, Douglas, I mean, you can maybe, I mean, um, you know, cause you talk about tracking that balance, right. Of like, uh, you know, basically looking back at history, I'm like, tradition and looking back at your ancestors, but also innovation as well. Because I think from your work, you've you've blended a lot of like, you know, kind of you're bridging kind of um, your uh, indigenous and also European influences, for example. I mean, like, what? how do you, and then also the fact that, you know, looking at traditions and bringing it up, up to, you know, current times, especially when it comes to global warming, climate change, you know, so, and, how do you, you know, like, it's like, where do you be, where, where do you strike that balance between, you know, honoring the past, but also being an innovator as well? Well, what uh, our culture brings us up to be loving and caring and, and, uh, and for everything and for, for, from each other, for each other. And so that's the basis. They, in fact, our elders say that the soft power of love is much greater than the hard power of force. And so uh, always we are taught to always keep our hearts open, even forgive, like speak from our hearts. And I feel that as architects, we design from our hearts as well, if we're serving people. And also I feel that uh, our culture teaches more maternal values of loving and caring and nurturing and and healing and uh, and so we have that opportunity as architects to express uh, those principles in our work and have our buildings be like caring very caring mothers you know that wrap around us wrap around the people in a very caring way. And I think that that has been my whole approach to architecture and uh, in serving everyone um, and have it be as an example of, of caring for people and the environment and try to have people understand uh, that there's another way of expressing ourselves in our built environments and in our cities. They don't have to be places of, uh, of brutality and and, uh, and places that alienate people. They can be places that people care and, and people care for each other and proper places for women and children. And uh, I think that, that that's what we have to offer, you know, uh, as another alternative, another worldview. Mm because we have to change our worldview if we're going to you know survive on this planet we have to t entirely change our worldview um yeah i mean like and, uh, uh, all of the work ahead. has to be far more sustainable you know yes absolutely absolutely i mean tammy this is all uh, you know we talk about the the, the porcupine school right can you talk about like, mm -hmm. like you know, like, like you know, I mean, I you know, uh, actually bringing in children to kind of come up with the ideas of what they're you know, um, and you know, kind of that method behind that and building the school and making it again a welcoming place. You know, these are the basically the people who are going to be uh, basically using the you know the the school. What was your kind of? I mean, talk about that process. I mean, is that something that you uh? um use in is this like kind of like a, a standard process you do for all of your designs or yeah i mean it's it's something that when i was young my dad would talk to me about um 
that he had interactions with various architects as part of his job um, in education for tribal schools. And he would comment that a lot of times the architects wouldn't be meeting with the community. They wouldn't meet with um, definitely not parents and for sure not students. They would, you know, come out to the site, do a couple, you know, small meetings and then go away and design it, come back in, the school would start to get built and no one really would really know from the community what was going on. No one would really know, you know, what it was going to look like or, you know, anything about it. It was just something that was done for them. And, you know, through these talks with my dad and um, through my career of, of working in mainstream architecture, I realized that there was this process that um, needed to be more inclusive with tribal communities because when I would talk to tribal leaders, they would have these beautiful buildings that were maybe, you know, award-winning buildings that architects came in and did, but they there wasn't a connection to that building and there wasn't a feeling that that building was part of the community and that that um, that it was theirs. And so when we did Porcupine School, that's the community that my mom grew up in. And so that's the community that I consider home. So um, I really wanted to make sure that um, that the, the building would be taken care of and that the building would become an integral part of the community. Um, in addition to being a school, it also functions as the community center. So we, the, talking to the children, it was really kind of a surprise. You know, we had them in a, in a room and had them drawing and, you know, just um, writing poems or writing, you know, whatever they wanted to, to, however they wanted to express themselves about what they wanted in the new school. And because doing a new school in these communities, it's a once in a lifetime shot. It might happen once every 70 or 80 years. So people aren't used to a process of working with an architect. People aren't used to a process of, um, you know, how long it takes to actually get the funding and the design process and building it. So, you know, it, it needs to be very deliberate. And when we talked to the students, they had a completely unique way of thinking about their school. And it was based on their experiences as children in this community that has various social problems, alcoholism, abuse, poverty, um, you know, food insecurity, all these issues. And school to them meant something very, very different than mainstream children in, you know, in my hometown where my, like my children who went to public school. So school to them needed to be safe and school to them was a place where they came to have a hot meal each day, where they came to be warm, where they came to, um, you know, have people who care about them and, and where they felt safe. And so that's really where it kind of sprung from of, of that these children have needs that are unique and that are beyond just meeting their basic education needs. I mean, I mean and my last question, this is more kind of big idea question is like, you know, I was, again, uh, being indigenous in the colonized world, you know, there's like the fact that, you know, you have to, you know, from the, the exhibit of the Biennale, you know, you, you're seeing an influx of more and more um, indigenous people in different industries, especially in architecture and design. Uh, and you look at history, I mean, even in the U.S. where there's like, you know, a lot of, um, I mean, you know, the fact that, you know, like a lot of these like, say, Civil War statues are being taken down. And, you know, I mean, uh, you know, you're looking at like schools, names are being changed, you know, uh, how, what, and then, but you have this like, definitely a movement of like wanting, you know, uh, the way history is supposed to be taught, how to, quote unquote, taught, you know, to stay the same and then not to put these like, you know, like uh, voices, like, you know, uh, uh, you know, basically it's essentially, you know, the, 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 the winners write history. That's kind of their stance, right? What is, how do you, I mean, and, and buildings themselves and what you design, what do you design, what do you build? They're not only, like you said, they're, you know, there's like a lot of use, like 70, 80, years of, of usage and these are basically monuments in themselves no no different from statues right so uh and whatnot uh, what, do you what is how do you what you're doing is great work and fighting against kind of like basically people wanting to to keep the status quo and the way it's, it's always been done the way textbooks have been written and it's, it should be th done this way how do you how do you how do you um inspire people um and the next generations to kind of continue on the fight regarding this because it is a fight is that to to 
me? Yeah, anyone, anyone. Okay, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll take a shot at it. Um, I think I think that's what this film is really, to me, the, the exciting thing about this film is, is it shows people um, what indigenous, modern indigenous architecture can look like and that it's not teepees and wigwams and, you know, okay. when we say we we're, we're want to um, bring and show our people's sovereignty within the built environment, it doesn't mean we're trying to go backwards to live in the old ways. It's about how our cultures have survived and thrived for centuries and you know, millenniums and since time immemorial. And they've done that by changing and adapting to the different times. And that's what needs to happen with architecture. And so um, this film is inspiring to me and it, in that it shows, it's gonna show the next generations that there's this way and there's to interpret and work with these communities to identify and define who they are right now and who they are you know, gonna be into the future um, with respect, a respectful nod and reference to the past in, in, with our values and with you know, the community and the culture. So um, yeah, I think it, it this film will change the perception of a lot of people. I think, you know, people who aren't familiar with indigenous architects are going to think they're going to come here and see teepee buildings and they're going to come here and see, you know, <laughs> stuff like historical things. And it's not like that. You know, Douglas was, was you know, the, the leader. He was so far ahead of his time with, with his buildings and the forms that he created that were, you know, ahead of technology, you know, AutoCAD couldn't even do those kind of forms back then. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. you know, those types of things that were, were um, you know looking towards the future and, and being thought leaders and being you know technology driven, but also at the core of it is that are these really strong and powerful cultures. Yeah. And Douglas, I mean, you've you've um, you know you are a veteran. You've lived a very long life. Do you? I mean, you're looking at things like corporate responsibility, looking at governments actually providing that space. Um, um, do you see this as real change happening today, or do you see it as a more or just performative, like in years past? I think uh, there are uh, changes being made. Even uh, even the uh, whole history of Canada, the, the director of the museum decided that uh, history didn't start from European contact, and he he started uh, changing and rewriting Canadian history. Uh, from the last ice age on, from the first people that came to the land. And he showed how we were uh, uh, a very strong society that uh, was thriving, but always uh, being in harmony with nature. And we had governments that was were truly democratic and everybody was heard and everybody was respected. And women... Uh, voices were heard. You always listen to them, to your mother and the mothers of your children, and their decisions were what the men uh, uh, were trusted with, and and followed through. And so it was a society that's based more on nature and our own nature as human beings. And then uh, what happened when? Uh, the Europeans came and how our society was devastated and and uh, and what happened to us and and the fact that we survived is a great celebration for us so we survived all of this and we're stronger for it and I firmly believe that the teachings of our elders are not of the past they are of the future really we have to listen to their teachings because they're the teachings of the future if we don't listen to them, we won't have a future. So uh, I, I really feel the indigenous people are really going to be the saviors of mankind because of, and thank heavens that they survived and thrived throughout this whole process. I think we're all stronger <coughs> for it, you know? And uh, I, I think and when I visited Hawaii, I just saw so much of, of just destruction of the land and and it, it just sort of made me weep to see how much you preserved and how beautiful it was and hopefully you'll be able to 
bring that beauty back again. And, and instead of having these large companies uh, plow your land over and, and use it for monoculture, you have so much different varieties and beauty on that island. And, and it's, uh, it needs to be returned to its um, beautiful Aboriginal state in many ways. And on that note, I think that's absolutely true. And then, like, what's great about this film? It's, it's you know, it's a, hopefully it's a, you know document. It's an inspiration. It's it's, it's evergreen. Uh, Ron, you know, like you're. In, I mean, is this film going to be? Uh, uh, I know this is a uh, you know, um, part of the TBO uh, uh, network, but is it is, is there a drive to put put in in schools to you know, to or, or do the curriculum or anything like that? Well, I think that's uh, the, certainly the long-term plan with this. Uh, right now, you know, it has been released in Canada, and we're looking for international uh, to, to to reach an international audience. But you know, just to go back and, and speak to something that uh, uh, Tammy had said, you know, um, I'm really uh, you know so proud of this film and and what it what it says and the collaboration that we've done and the message that has gone out through this. And even though it has so far just been released in Canada, the response was overwhelming uh, in terms of, I received so much uh, emails and, uh, and response from people who said, geez, you know what, I had, I had no idea. I had no idea our Indigenous peoples were even like this. And one of the things I thought was a, the opportunity of this film was to use Indigenous architecture as a lens to better understand Indigenous communities without having uh, all of these issues on the table right. that separates and divides. And, and, and the fact that we were able to work together to create this, you know, people came back and when they understood, you know, first of all, and saw all of these successful architects. And, and I think a theme, you know, uh, that I, I sense in this film is resilience. And Douglas just talked about that resilience, that in spite of everything, you know, they've come through that, they've, they've overcome it as much as you can and they are moving forward and they are changing the world and and putting an, a stamp on a new a new vision for the future and and having having a role with that but when when people understood what the basis is of the culture in terms of using as 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 they mentioned you know tradition and history and and culture and, and seven generations and sustainability environmental responsibility and 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 community involvement when you talk about these people who are building city these city planners you know what are they planning they're plunking down these these big buildings and and then you know they're filling them but the planning has not been there you know so there's a when when, when people saw this film and understood all of that i think it created a certainly a new um a new understanding from the non-indigenous community and there were many you know you know we we had over a million uh, views already in 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 Canada, and and I think the other interesting thing is that the indigenous community seems to have embraced the film as much. Uh, you know, uh, we've had a huge response from indigenous uh, festivals across America, uh, as well as non-indigenous festivals. So I think you know, in terms of getting a, a positive message out there, which is not only about the environmental responsibility and all of that and what we need to do to sustain the planet, but the underlying message that we all have to work together. You know, yeah. uh, I don't believe the indigenous communities are going to succeed on their own with this without bringing the non-indigenous communities together. We all have to be sitting around the table. We've all got to be sitting in circle together to, to make this a reality to create this new future and and to me that's the success of this film uh which you know i'm i'm so proud of and and so honored to have been able to to work with all these brilliant talented uh people paul it's a great honor to to include this film in uh, this year's film festival and um and you know um we look forward to you know um future work of you know Tammy and Douglas, and also Ron as well. Thank you so much for, for, for all your work. It's a great honor to speak to you. And, um, you know, just before we end, you know, I just like, want to thank thank you for all watch, for the audience watching this discussion today. And a special mahalo to all of our HIF sponsors, board of directors, and our HIF Ohana members. If you're able, please consider donating to HIF. Every dollar counts towards keeping HIF presenting great content like this in the future. Learn more and donate at hif.org slash donate. Again, thank you very much. Um, 
Ron, Tammy, and Douglas for joining us in discussion. And please, I implore everyone to watch this amazing documentary from Earth to Sky. And uh, we hope to see um, you again in future films or future projects. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.